Good to see y'all. Missed you, man. So, uh, big uh, big day for uh, for Tennessee football and and uh, the future of uh, of where we're going. Um, welcoming uh, the class of 24 and uh, great day. A lot of those guys are are already here, but. Uh, I want to thank our coaches, uh, our recruiting staff. There's so many people that go into uh, to the work that takes place to uh, to sign uh, a class on National Signing Day. Uh, also, want to thank uh, all the high school coaches that have been so welcoming uh, to all of us as uh, as we've traveled around uh, our footprint and across the country. Uh, coaches have been awesome. Uh, lastly, want to thank uh, the families that entrusted their kids to us and, and helping them grow into the men and the players that uh, that they dream about. So, uh, really excited about this group. Uh, 27 guys uh, at this point that we've signed so far. I think 15 uh, of those kids are, are mid-year uh, that are with us right now. The the high school guys. Uh, we have a few transfer uh, transfer portal guys that are already here on campus as well. Uh, excited about the group. Um, love the length, athleticism that that we've added. Um, you know, you, you look at uh, what we've signed, uh, obviously a point of emphasis was uh, the line of scrimmage. We continue to add uh, really good players to, uh, to our roster in that way, and then uh, athleticism and length on uh, at the skill spots. So uh, I feel like it uh, is a, a really good group. Uh, they're dynamic in the way that they play. I uh, love the competitive makeup of, of this group. Uh, some guys that have already shown some leadership traits and excited to get to work with them uh, whenever they get to campus. So with that, I'll open it up. Yeah, Coach, kind of big picture recruiting. What, what are the – you've been in this business a while. What, yeah. what are the challenges now to recruit recruiting? What are the ju adjustments that you and your staff are have had to make, continue to have to make as the dynamics of recruiting appear to be changing out there? Well, the the dynamics are different in that your roster uh, has an opportunity to uh, to leave at the end of the year. Um, is uh, they look for, um, you know, the right place, right time, uh, right fit for, for themselves. Um, I think you, you look at uh, our ability to retain a majority of our, our roster. You look at the guys that chose to come back for another year, uh, a lot of veteran guys. Um, some of them had opportunities to move on uh, to the next level. And I uh, feel like you know, the culture, the energy, the ability to develop here, um, that uh, it was right for them to come back for another year too. Um, so there's a lot of things that, that go into it. Um, yeah, I think the, the hardest thing in today's landscape is uh, the uncertainty of the numbers. That can be with your entire roster. It can be with uh, position groups. So um, because of the portal, uh, the recruitment of these guys, and, and I'm talking about you know the, the fact that kids will still be going into the portal here uh, into January, um, you're constantly uh, evalu evaluating your roster, where you're at, what are the needs that you have. Um, you're looking for athletic traits. Uh, at times, you feel like you need experience. Uh, at times, you feel like you know there's guys that are on campus that you need to develop and, and uh, get them ready to play by the time you kick off next year. Does it make it impossible to get a two-year, you know, two years from the portal, but you're thinking two years down, down the road? Does it make it well, I, I difficult to do that? Well, you, you have to recruit um, with the mindset of still developing the guys as young guys that are, are coming on your campus. Uh, and uh, uh, at the same time, um, you got to understand that um, as you recruit during the course of the year, you know, there may be uh, guys that decide to leave your roster. And so your numbers at a certain position can change uh, early and in the middle and at the late uh, part of the season. Josh, obviously there's going to be a lot of new look it's going to be kind of a new look in the secondary next season. A lot of guys are, yeah. are, are headed out, some guys coming in, some guys staying with the program. How, how do you all feel about sort of what position that, that, that position group's in going into next year? Yeah, I like the physical traits of the guys that are in the building right now. Um, we have some young guys that, that got to grow and, and mature as football players, but I, I love the athletic traits. Um, that's true of the young guys that were with us uh, this past season, uh, true of the, the uh, signees that uh, are coming in. Um, we felt like we wanted to add some experience at that uh, in those positions. Uh, we've you know, attacked that through the portal with a couple guys as, as well. Josh, you talk about the trenches being important in this class. The, this group of offensive linemen that you're bringing in, Obviously, they're not going to have to step into day one roles because you have some veterans coming back. But how confident are you that they can provide some 
sustainability, if I can speak, and uh, provide some depth <laughs> right away uh, with that room. Yeah, it's a group that uh, I, I really like. Uh, her high-end uh, competitive makeup. Um, it's a really mature group. Um, high school offensive linemen almost always are going to have to develop uh, the physical attributes. I'm just talking about you know the strength and, and size uh, that you're going to need to be able to play uh, at this level. A lot of those guys, I think four of them are already here right now. Um, they've shown the athletic traits that we, we thought we saw uh, on video. Um, you know, it's a long journey to get those guys ready, um, but it's a, it's a really good group. Coach, having watched Boo Carter a few times in high school, he, he just kind of commands a certain level of uh, attention on either side of the ball. Um, what kind of mental makeup do you feel like he has? And then can you speak also specific, specifically about Peyton Lewis and uh, and um, Mike Matthews. <laughs> yeah, I might come back to you and ask you to um, finish off the names here by the end of it. Um, you know, I uh, thought our staff did a, a great job inside of, uh, of our home state. I think we got eight guys uh, that will be joining us in this class from the, the state of Tennessee. You, you mentioned Boo, uh, Mr. Football, um, dynamic playmakers, played both sides of, of the, the line of scrimmage. Um, was really good as a, as a returner as well. Uh, we've already seen a lot of those uh, skill sets from him. Uh, this might be day three or day four already for him uh, out on the grass with us. Um, you know, he's, he's electric. He's got great change of direction, short area quickness, got a really good football IQ. Um, he's natural uh, as, as a returner too. We've already uh, seen some of that from him. So really excited ab uh, about who he is. He's got a, a real maturity about him on the football field um, that's rare for a high school kid. Um, and then, you know, I got a chance to see some of that when I went and watched him play live, but also uh, already in his transition here. The other two guys you asked about were, Peyton yeah, Peyton Lewis, um, you know, uh, a track kid that's, you know, e electric. Um, with the ball in his hands this year, you look at his development between the tackles, great vision, great uh, ability, uh, short area quickness, constantly chewing up ground uh, as he's working uh, through the line of scrimmage, you know, developed the ability to play with great pad level, smart, tough, competitive, uh, really excited about him. Um, Mike Matthews uh, has been really good uh, the first three, four days already uh, out on the grass, uh, got great length, um, you know, just talking about his wingspan. Uh, extremely explosive, the ability to go up and high point a ball over the middle of the football football field or out on the uh, the edge uh, as he's going vertically. Um, you know, as a wide receiver, you're going to have to develop uh, the ability to play versus man press at the line of scrimmage. Those are things that you typically don't see, um, but uh, a really bright guy that uh, has got a great future. Because these days the portal can you can change your rotation and your roster pretty quickly or. When you're signing high school kids now, are they asking more questions about what their path is to immediate playing time or to early playing time as opposed to what they would ask a few years ago? Well, first of all, they've always asked uh, that, that um, I asked that question too. But uh, um, absolutely, um, you know, they're, they're looking at your roster and, and what's going on in, in portal recruiting as well uh, as a part of the process of uh, – you know, what your roster is going to look like when they step foot on campus. And, you know, they'll ask just a general overall philosophy question about that, too. Coach, just this league, in general, everybody can see on fall Saturdays how competitive this league, but what is it like on the recruiting trail to try and compete and keep up in this league? Yeah, as competitive as it is on the football field, uh, it's even more competitive in recruiting. Um, you know, the time, energy, effort, uh, strain, everybody's working in the same footprint. Uh, I think we're one of the few leagues left um, where it's actually a, a regional footprint. Um, you're competing against the guys inside of your conference uh, every time you're talking to a kid. Josh, the three transfers, you touched on the guys in the secondary. Just what do you, what do you see in Holden and in Jacoby and, and uh, Jermad in the secondary that made you want to add those guys? Yeah, uh, Holden uh, got the physical attributes. Uh, you can see in this footage already that uh, he's got the ability to play out in space, uh, connected in the line of scrimmage. Uh, has the body type and frame to, to do everything that we're going to ask him to do uh, inside of this league, um, inside of our offense. Uh, he's bright, competitive. Um, he's, uh, he's got the makeup to, to help us Im immediately. And obviously, that's a position, um, you know, over the last couple of years that we knew we were going to have to, um, you know, go, uh, go attack in, in, the, in the portal. Um, you know, the secondary guys, um, they're athletic. They got great short area quickness. They're willing to be physical, stick their face on people. Um, they have multiple years left uh, that uh, can grow inside of what we're doing. 
I feel like both of them can make an immediate impact, obviously, as well. Uh, yeah, uh, Jacoby was out there uh, today. Uh, Holden's on campus today. Obviously, Josh got to ask you about the quarterback. What do you guys like about Jake when you evaluated him, and, and kind of what do you see as the, the immediate steps that he needs to take? Yeah, he's gonna, he's going to have to grow uh, uh, really quickly. Um, he'll get uh, get spoon fed as we start uh, here in January and, and uh, grow uh, into spring football. Um, smart, competitive. Um, you know, he's got good fundamentals. Uh, we got to refine some of those things. Uh, he's already been working on those since he stepped foot on campus. Um, but uh, his football IQ, his ability to retain information, process out on the football field. Um, he's a winner. He's competitive. Uh, he's got the right makeup. You spoke about the eight guys who are from Tennessee. How much of an emphasis in this class did you spend on finding in-state guys? Yeah, we, we always are going to uh, place an emphasis on it. Um, you know, we spend a lot of time and energy, uh, communication with the high school coaches, guys that have their, their uh, boots on the ground here. Uh, we're going to recruit them the right way. Uh, doesn't mean we'll get every single one of them. Uh, doesn't mean we're going to offer every single one. But we want to make sure that we're very thorough in the evaluation process and, you know, based on where we're at and, and who they are and what their makeup is, uh, is it the right fit? You talk about going to the portal, but also recognizing you have some young, talented guys that are that have not found their way to the field yet. How do you balance that? Because, you know, when they bring, when you bring, when you go to the portal at their position, for them not to kind of get, you know, okay, here comes a guy that could be in, yeah, take my a, spot. There's that a type flip of side to the coin for sure. Yeah, and then my second question um, would be, how big will the state of Tennessee be in 2025? Yeah, um, again, uh, at the end of the day, you're trying to, to build your roster to be its best. Uh, that's in the immediate, um, but you also have to have a, a, a long-term future of it as well. You got to have kids inside of your program that you're, you're developing physically within your scheme and uh, the culture and leadership that you want inside of your program too. So um, there's more changes to your program than there used to be um, in trying to project. I think it was Hubs that asked about that. Um, but at the same time, um, you, you got to develop from within it as, as well. Um, State of Tennessee is going to be huge uh, for us um, in, uh, in this upcoming cycle. Um, it, uh, it always is. Um, but uh, next year's a, a great year uh, inside of this. You can already see that uh, with some of the guys that we've evaluated. Um, we've got a great reception from uh, the high school coaches uh, across the state. Um, you know, in the short amount of time that we've been here, three years, uh, developed really good relationships, rapport. Uh, we've had a lot of those coaches here on campus already that, uh, you know, share uh, and have an opportunity to come and spend time with, uh, with our staff to get to know who we are and what we're about. Um, but uh, it's a great year inside of this state. You mentioned to West about the, some of those young defensive backs needing to, to grow up and mature, or, you know, which is natural. Yeah. But with the portal defections that you've had in the secondary, how ready do you feel like those guys are if needed in Orlando? And secondly, how set is your roster as you wrap up here and get ready to go to Orlando in terms of ops outs, more transfers, guys going to the league, that type of thing? Yeah, I, th I think we're we're closing in on uh, being more defined on our roster. Um, you know, with the the portal dates, um, nothing is you know finalized at, at this point for any team across the country, and that's your own roster. But it's also guys that become uh, available in the uh, in the portal. So. <clears throat> it's different than National Signing Day used to mean that was the end of kind of the transition of your roster and, and your roster was known for the next year. At this point, um, you know, you, there's a good percentage that you know about, but uh, there's still going to be opportunities uh, through the portal as we continue to go through the month of, of January. You look at last year, um, you know, I think we had, you know, Omar, Gabe Judy, and, and Keenan Peely that were all added after the bowl game. What about roster sets for the bowl game? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we're we're pretty set on on a majority of those guys that uh, will be traveling us uh, traveling with us to uh, to Orlando. Uh, you talked about the the young DBs. This is the time of year. Um, you know, 20 years ago, everybody played in in the bowl game. There there were really no opt outs at, at that time. Um, with the NFL, more guys have have elected to uh, to do that. So you know, you look over the the recent history of bowl games. It provides a great opportunity to the young guys inside of your roster that you know may 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 have 
played uh, sporadically throughout the course of the season on offense and or defense um, that uh, get an opportunity to go out and play. And, you know, they get uh, game week preparation. They get a, a couple extra weeks because of uh, the bowl preparation. Um, but it provides opportunity. And I do feel good about the guys that uh, will be out there on, in the, the secondary. Yeah, Josh, with the, the quarterback position, is that somewhere would, where ideally you might add a, a veteran to that mix? Or do you feel comfortable if you go into next year with a, a redshirt freshman and freshman as the two guys? Well, um, you know, I think quarterback is one of the positions you look across the country. It's hard to have uh, the depth at that position that you, you know, historically may have had. Um, we're going to continue to always evaluate. That's true at quarterback, but it's true uh, at every position here as we go through January. Yes, sir, it is. <laughs> Josh, I guess regardless of, of position, how much flexibility right now do you think y'all still have with the portal? I know that's a, always the number always changes because you got guys that need to make decisions of their own. But I guess first part, how much flexibility do you think you have right now? And two, do you feel good about some of the options that are out there that y'all are talking to? Yeah, I mean, the the recruiting process for those guys, some of those guys make quick decisions. Some of those guys you've been in communication with um, that are already in the portal that you know may elect to take a visit in, in January or they're nearing the decision process, don't have it finalized by a day like today when uh, I'm speaking in front of you. There's going to be guys that will continue to get into the portal on the back end of, of some of these bowl games too. That's where it, it's different than it used to be. Um, you know personnel that would become available, you have to constantly monitor and, and evaluate um, the, the player and the person here as, as you go um, you know, through Christmas, through, uh, through January. Josh, the tight end position, how important was it to add Cole Harrison and, and in addition to Holden Stays? And, and do you now like where you're at numbers-wise with scholarships in, in that room now? Uh, like the room where we're at right now, um, uh, you're always going to continue to evaluate um, every position, like I said, and, and tight end would continue to be one. Um, Cole was big for us because uh, he's got length, athleticism. Uh, as, as he continues to develop uh, physically, uh, I think his traits are only going to showcase more. He's got really good ball skills, uh, has to develop in the, in the core. Uh, that will happen uh, through fundamentals, but it will happen through uh, the growth on his frame.